American Horror Story can be horrifying, and it's even more chilling when you consider that the many villains and victims across its various stories are drawn from the real-life crimes, both solved and unsolved, that populate American history. The first season of American Horror Story was retroactively dubbed Murder House. It's a fitting name for a season that saw Connie Britton and Dylan McDermott star as Vivian and Ben Harmon, a couple who moved with their teenage daughter Violet into a Los Angeles mansion. As you can probably guess, the mansion is haunted, and the Harmons are constantly confronted by the ghosts of those who have been murdered there. Among their many supernatural roommates is Elizabeth Short, known to history as the Black Dahlia. I'm an actress. I'm gonna make it big. Everyone says so. You can expect to see me up on the silver screen one day. Mina Savari played the AHS version of Short, an aspiring actor desperate to be famous, who visits the house in the late 40s for a dental appointment that turns lethal. In reality, Short was indeed a Hollywood hopeful who went missing in early January 1947. Her body was discovered six days later near a park, horribly mutilated and posed in a grotesque fashion. The crime was never solved, though one police detective has written a compelling book full of evidence suggesting that his late father, who was a doctor, was responsible. The second season of AHS was subtitled Asylum and focused on the patients and staff of Briarcliff, a sanitarium in New England during the 1960s. One of the asylum's residents was Kit Walker. He lived happily with his wife Alma until the interracial couple was visited by extraterrestrials who abducted her. Kit's ensuing psychological breakdown leads authorities to believe that he offed his missing wife and he's sent to Briarcliff. Did you murder your wife? No. And I'm not crazy. That's unfortunate. If they decide you're sane, you're going someplace way worse than this. Barney and Betty Hill were the model for Kit and Alma's story, though they thankfully suffered no homicide allegations as a result of the visitation they claimed to have experienced in 1961. While driving the back roads of New Hampshire, they saw what Betty described as a shooting star falling upwards that pursued their car. Suddenly, the pair found themselves 35 miles from where they had been only moments earlier. Their watches had stopped working, and they'd lost two hours of time. Under hypnosis, the couple claimed to recall details of their visitation. They were were credible, as it seemed unlikely that an interracial couple in the 1960s would want to draw further attention to themselves. Betty claimed to continue to experience visitations for years following her abduction. New Orleans provides the magical setting for Coven, the third installment of AHS, which draws on the historical legacy of the Crescent City to populate its cast of characters. One of the show's most memorable monsters is Madame Delphine LaLaurie, whose horrific torture of her slaves reached levels of inhumanity, made even more ghastly by Kathy Bates's unsettling performance and the real-life suffering that inspired it. It wasn't any 150 slaves that died up here. I can tell you that. I'm sorry. It was 62. Bates brings LaLaurie to life over 150 years after the suspected death of the real Madame Delphine, who was born in New Orleans in the late 18th century. She lived a privileged life as a socialite for a time, until reports began to emerge that Delphine mistreated her slaves. The claims were not investigated, though the city did have laws against such abuse. Following the suspected killing of a young slave in her care, LaLaurie's house caught fire in 1834 and revealed the family had indeed brutalized those in her workforce. The slaves had been starved, shackled at the neck with spiked collars, and subjected to torture. Enraged by this cruelty, an angry mob ransacked the house, and Delphine fled the city for Paris. On AHS, Marie Laveau is a powerful, immortal voodoo queen played by Angela Bassett, whose desire for revenge against Madame LaLaurie leads her to form her own cult of followers. Don't think that they didn't suffer because they did greatly. But the fate that I have planned for you will make their suffering seem as a gentle sleep. In the modern-day timeline of Coven, she alternately makes and breaks alliances with the Coven of Witches led by Fiona Good, descended from the victims of the Salem Witch Trials. Confirmed details of the life of the real Marie Laveau, who was born to a Creole mother and white father at the turn of the 19th century, are scant. The woman herself, a Catholic who wove threads of African and Native American traditions into her religious practice, was reluctant to tell her own story, according to her 1881 obituary in the New York Times. What is known is that Laveau worked as a hairdresser, a detail represented in her AHS counterpart, and that this work informed her role as a spiritual advisor to the wealthy and powerful people of New Orleans, who flocked to her for guidance in matters both personal and professional. 
A traveling show of human curiosity stars in the fourth season of AHS. Led by the scheming ringmaster Elsa Mars, the carnival performers of AHS Freak Show are misunderstood by the public, who perceive them as monstrous because of their unique appearances. Among them is Pepper, a microcephalic woman recruited by Elsa after her family abandoned her to an orphanage. Her first appearance, however, wasn't in Freak Show. She actually first popped up in Asylum, where her storyline diverged from that of her historical inspiration. Play with me! Play with me! Pepper, as played by Naomi Grossman in both Asylum and Freak Show, was based on Schlitzie Surtees, a real carnival performer. Schlitzie is thought to be a man named Simon Metz, born in 1901 in Bronx, New York. His parentage is unknown, but his condition relegated his brain development to that of a young child. He performed with the Ringling Brothers Circus and at Coney Island in the late 20s, before being cast in Todd Browning's 1932 MGM cult classic Freaks. He took the last name Surtees from his guardian George. George, a former carnival barker and chimpanzee trainer. Slitzy became one of the most well-known carnival performers of his era, costumed in a dress and billed as a woman. During the events of Freak Show, Elsa discovers conjoined twins Dot and Bet Tatler and convinces them to join her troupe. Dot is reluctant and relents only to please her sister Bet, who dreams of becoming a star. Playing the role of two different sisters on the same series would be a challenge for any actor, but Sarah Paulson's a pro, and she successfully portrayed the twins with ease and believability. Elsa, you can be the fairy godmother who grants the wish of the plain Jane, that's Dot, and transforms her into the epitome of glamour. That's me. The physiology of the Tatler sisters was inspired by real-life conjoined sisters Abby and Brittany Hensel, whose 2003 documentary Joined for Life was closely reviewed by Paulson in preparation for the part. Yet the story of the Tatlers follows the lives of a different set of twins, Violet and Daisy Hilton. These conjoined sisters, like Bette and Dot, suffered the abuse of their guardians during their early years in show business. The pair toured the carnival circuit and even starred with Schlitzie Surtees and Freaks. The sisters saw great success for a time and eventually liberated themselves from their guardians on the advice of Harry Houdini. Eventually, interest in their act dwindled and they spent their last years working in a grocery store before they passed away in 1969, dying a few days apart. James March built the Hotel Cortez, where the bloody events of AHS Hotel take place. You see, March was no benevolent hotelier. In fact, he specifically designed the place around his violent tendencies, fashioning rooms that enabled him to commit any number of killings within its walls. March is clearly modeled on real-life serial killer H.H. H. Holmes, who did build a hotel designed for homicide. It featured gas jets, which turned guest rooms into deadly chambers, and a wooden chute that allowed for bodies to be swiftly disposed of in an incinerator. His murder hotel claimed the lives of many young women who visited there in connection with the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. When he was finally caught, Holmes confessed to taking the lives of 30 people, though authorities believe he may have been responsible for nearly 200 deaths. He was hanged for his crimes in 1896. His hotel was later intended to be remodeled as a murder castle attraction, but was destroyed by a fire before its opening. Like the Iliad, your stories will live on forever. The fourth episode of Hotel features a deadly dinner party hosted by Mr. March, a who's who of famous criminals check in to attend the festivities, which they've attended annually for many years. Yep, the guests of March's party are some of the most famous real serial killers in American history. The first guest to check in is Richard Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker, who was responsible for at least 13 deaths in the 1980s. The next killer to turn up at the hotel is Eileen Warrenos, who confessed to the deaths of six men she claimed assaulted her while she worked as a prostitute. Jeffrey Dahmer, who killed at least 11 people, also turns up. Evidence indicates Dahmer may have consumed some of the remains of his victims. Jeffrey, you're even more quiet than usual tonight. I'm just hungry. He's joined for dinner by none other than John Wayne Gacy, who dressed up as a clown in his free time and also took the lives of 33 men. In its sixth year, AHS decided to change things up a bit and brought us Roanoke. 
which is stylized as a found footage documentary. Roanoke, or at least its first half, follows a young couple living in an old mansion known as Roanoke House, near the site of the lost Roanoke colony in Virginia. Roanoke was a real colony from the 16th century that represented the first attempt to establish an English settlement in North America. When the community's founder returned from a two-year voyage, its inhabitants had all vanished, leaving the word Croatoan carved in a tree nearby. Another nod to this history is series character Thomasine White, played by Kathy Bates's My Roanoke Nightmare character, Agnes Mary Weinstead. White was a real person, and was indeed married to John White, founder of the Roanoke Colony. Although not birthed of mine own treacherous flesh, I would cut thy throat and all thee into bloody damnation. While there's no evidence to suggest she accompanied White to his colony in Virginia, their union produced two children, including their daughter Elizabeth. Elizabeth bore a son at Roanoke, who vanished, along with his mother and father and the rest of the colony between 1588 and 1590. The 2016 U.S. presidential election gave AHS plenty of fuel for the story of Cult, their seventh season. In the turbulent post-election times, a cult forms in a small town in Michigan. One of its associates reveals she had a love affair with none other than Valerie Solanas, the woman who shot Andy Warhol, the famous pop artist and leader of the studio known as The Factory, which drew artists and luminaries of all kinds to congregate and experiment. In the AHS universe, Solanas was also responsible for the Zodiac killings. In reality, that series of slayings was carried out by an unknown person in the Bay Area who taunted police with a series of cryptic messages sent to local newspapers in the late 60s. Solanus only attempted to kill Warhol and Mario Amaya, an art dealer. Both men lived, but Warhol had to wear a surgical corset for the rest of his life. The crime saw Solanus sentenced to three years in prison. She suffered from schizophrenic paranoia that complicated her rehabilitation and died in a welfare hotel in San Francisco in 1988. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.